Hey everybody, we are now going to explore how to texture your model in an external, an external program called Substance Painter 2. Now Substance Painter 2 is free to download and students actually get it free for a year, which is a really great value. It's the full complete version and allows you to texture. So I highly suggest that you texture with this program. It's gonna give you more real time specific and more high impact results, especially if you're not really good at Photoshop and um, you're kind of still learning hand painting techniques. So what we're gonna need to do to start this file is we're gonna actually gonna need an FBX of our file. So I'm gonna go ahead and open my texture start six file and we're gonna kind of exclude everything we've done in the last video that had to do with texturing in Photoshop. So we got a little bit done in Photoshop and you could see where it is quite a process and you, you know, you have to have some patience. This isn't gonna take a few minutes. This may take an hour or so to do. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our file and we're going to go to File, Export Selection. And in our selection, we wanna make sure that we turn the animation checkbox off. And we're gonna save this as Sword FBX. So I've gone ahead and saved that in your file directory for you, but you would export that selection and that's what we're gonna use for Substance Painter. So let's move forward and let's go to Substance. So I'm gonna open up Substance Painter and close some of these windows. And again, Substance Painter is a texturing program that uses physically based rendering materials, PBRs. And these physically based materials can be used rather well in game engines. Substance Painter is used all throughout the gaming industry and as well as the animation industry because of its ease of use and it's it's really a really quite amazing program that has tons of options and you don't really have to load textures and things like that. So let's go ahead and get started. When you open up Substance, yours may look like mine. It may slightly be different, but where you want to start is by going to File, New. And we're going to go and we're going to select the Unity 5 template. And we're going to go to Mesh and then Select. There we're going to navigate to our project scenes and our sword FBX and I'm going to double click on that sword and now at this point I could add things like uh, other meshes so if I did want to go and navigate back and maybe add that color map I worked on I can add to this in substance I don't really want to do that I'm going to do all of our work in substance right now so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and hold the alt key and you'll see there's our sword pretty nice right and it gives us the ability to really do a lot of amazing uh, texture items. Now I could just hop right in and start painting. You can see where I paint on my UV map, it shows up in the actual area. And that's really nice. Um, it allows us to play with field of view. It allows us to play with uh, different environment maps so I can actually change my lighting as I go through, which is a really cool kind of thing. So you can see the lighting kind of drastically changes depending on the map. And it does just a really a lot of nice parameters for us. Now, what I want to focus on first is I want to do some of the baking. So I'm going to go ahead quickly and I'm going to bake my textures. Now, when I hit bake textures, I may get a few errors with this, but out of default, we really need the curvature and the ambient occlusion. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and take some of these other ones off like ID and world space normal. And we're going to keep curvature and ambient occlusion. We can go ahead and play with each of the settings, but default usually works best. So I'm gonna run through these. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna bake some of the maps for me. And we'll come back, but you can see they're kind of down here now. And now we have our texture ready to go. So let's get started actually making this look pretty cool. So the first thing I really like to do is I like to kind of play with the form and the lighting of my file. So I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call this folder form. And I'm gonna go ahead and I have a layer here. I can leave it, I'll turn it off for now. And I'm gonna create a new fill layer. And this is just kind of my method. I'm gonna drop it in the form folder and I'm on this fill layer. I'm gonna make sure that the base color of the fill layer is completely black. So you can change the black values where you see fit. And I wanna play with the metalness and the roughness. I basically wanna turn them all the way to white so basically it almost looks like the surface shader because we're going to play with some occlusion here. We're going to actually call this one AO for ambient occlusion. Now we have this AO ready to go 
and I'm rhyming apparently now, but this AO is ready to go, but we need to add the occlusion map that we baked. So if I go to the textures folder, you can see if I had hit the baked textures correctly, I have an occlusion map here. So what I'm gonna do is right click and add a black mask. And with that black mask, I want to attach another fill to it. So I wanna fill this black mask with the occlusion map. So I'm gonna right click and say add fill to that mask. And I'm going to drag my occlusion from my textures folder all the way onto my, it says grayscale, on my color of my mask. And then that allows us to see the mask. Now what we wanna do is we wanna kind of invert this all. So we're going to go back to the mask, make sure it's highlighted in blue, right click, and we're going to add a generator. Generators are really amazing. They actually generate things like edge wear and tear and all sorts of cool stuff. So we're gonna to go to add generator and we're gonna use one of the mask editing software pieces. So like for instance, the mask editor is a really cool one. So immediately you can see we get some kind of soft finish, but let's go ahead and see what we can get out of this editor. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna invert my setting and that's just kind of what I do and I'm gonna change it to normal because I don't really wanna multiply this just yet. And I'm gonna play with some of my settings here. For instance, the contrast and I'm gonna pump up my ambient occlusion, and this is gonna get me some really nice shading. Now in certain areas, it's not gonna be the best, so I have to go in and really kind of balance, literally, my areas, but you can see I can start to really push and pull certain areas to play with this. Now this editor, you can do a lot of different things. You can adjust curvature, which will kind of pull in kind of the edges, and it will start to get us some really nice results. So again, play around with these settings. Each model is different. Um, you wanna just kinda make sure that, you know, obviously you're not blowing out the model like that. It can break pretty easily. But you're adjusting the intensity of these elements. And I'm kinda digging that. That's getting there pretty good. We have a pretty nice finish. And we're gonna go and continue to build off of this. All right, so now that we have that in there, and again, you, if I invert it, it obviously turns really black, so I wanna keep it this way. What I'm gonna do now is use one of the shaders that custom uh, that Substance Painter comes with. So if I go to Materials, one of my favorite shaders to start with is this bake light, Baked Lighting Material. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag this into my scene, and maybe we'll put that on top. And the Baked Lighting Material is actually rather nice because what happens with it is it's going to allow us to use some of the um, excess kind of tools that uh, the light baking in Maya would do. So if you see, we have like a material tab so we can kind of play with the metalness and roughness so we can kind of go through and adjust these. We have a diffuse. We can actually change the lighting of this so we can actually move the lights around and it's a lot quicker than maybe the Maya method just because you can see it. Now, one of my favorite things to do is to kind of play with the edge intensity and let's see kind of what we get. And actually, I'm gonna change this color to white and I'm gonna change the sky color to white here. So, and the horizon color, we're gonna change these all to white and black and we're gonna play around with the lighting just a little bit. And you can see by doing that, now I kind of get these really cool highlights on my model, which, you know, maybe we want to use. So again, we're going to play with some things like the edge smoothness and, you know, the cavities and all sorts of stuff. Just go really have fun with this and see if you can't get a really stylized effect. So we'll go through and we haven't added our color yet, so don't worry. So we're going to we're going to get to that in a bit. And there we go. So that looks rather nice in our scene. Now, what we can do as well is we can go ahead and add another fill layer if we want. And we baked two textures. We actually baked an occlusion and a cavity map. So we can do a very similar fill. Actually, let me go to mask here. Um, we can do a very similar item with uh, add fill. And we can actually add that cavity mask to this as well. And that will give us a very similar effect it's just really up to you, the user,
how you want to build that. So I'm going to hit delete there. I'm okay with what I have right now. So now that we have kind of our edges defined and we got some highlights going and we can play with the lighting, let's go ahead and add some color. So we'll turn this off for now and let's add a new folder and we'll call this new folder and we'll take it out to make sure it's on top. We'll call this new folder base. So these are going to be kind of the base colors and we're going to play with all these blending modes in a bit. But Substance is really great at using these materials like I mentioned. So what I can actually do is I can go through and add specific elements. So let's say I want to use a galvanized iron. Well if I drop that into my folder now my entire sword becomes galvanized iron. Uh, if I don't like that I can even take a grinded iron and put it in there. And you can see it brings me texture and things like normal maps and roughness and I can play with some of the this individual settings for it and I can play with all the different metal color so you can see by just moving the slider I get a lot of cool things the only issue though is everything is metal so how do I isolate it well I'm gonna go ahead and add a right click and add a black mask to this so I'm gonna hide that and let's go ahead and add a few more elements so let's add a um, maybe some sort of gold oh, that gold looks okay just and we can download more of these shaders but I'm gonna throw that gold in and uh, for now we're gonna right click and add a black mask that hides it and then maybe we want some sort of leather um, kind of material so if I look I can kinda hover over them I like this leather material let's put that in that looks really really great a lot quicker than the leather we made in Photoshop and we'll add a black mask okay so how do we get these elements on the individual elements of the sword well it's actually really easy we've created masks in each one of these now we just need to paint white or gray where the mask is revealed so I could just get my brush and I could just say I want to paint in white on that mask and you can see it actually paints in rather quickly well that's great, but is there an easier way? Absolutely. So let's go ahead and let's use some of the fill settings that Substance uses. So I'm going to go ahead and in the leather bag material, I'm going to click in the mask and I'm going to find this little square with a red button or red triangle on it. It's called polyfill. I'm going to click polyfill and then I'm going to choose this button at the very end that says UV. This is the UV fill. So at this point, I can just simply click on a UV island or a shell and wherever I click that will fill with that material and check that out pretty amazing right so I can now go to gold and I can click here and it will fill with gold and I have a few other areas I kinda want to be specifically gold so I could go and do that if I just want a few um, polygons or triangles filled I can go ahead and do this and just highlight those individual polygons and in this case I can even just drag over and there you go pretty cool right so it's a lot quicker than maybe Photoshop would actually use um, I can even go out here and select specific areas if I want I don't want that to be that specific color but um, I think we're gonna make it maybe the same as the the sword so let's go into the sword we'll go to UV this one's pretty easy you just just make sure you get a good click on it and fill these two elements with the sword and then again like I said I can use something like polygon fill and I can just highlight over them and let's make sure we get just the sword there we go so now we have a good base texture so how do we combine that with the lighting well this is really exciting stuff hopefully you guys are kinda of looking at this going holy crap this is pretty cool and you get pretty good results and what it's also going to do though is allow us to go further and mix that form lighting so if I turn the form lighting and move that folder above everything they don't really blend right well if I open up my form folder and I set it to all these blending modes for instance pass through still doesn't show but if I go and set maybe my baked lighting to overlay all of a sudden check that out look at the really nice shading that really comes together rather quick uh, we can also send our AO and we can set that to multiply 
and everything will kind of go in. I like to set my mask to screen. Oh, that's a little bright, isn't it? Let's set it to multiply. Yeah, that's a little better. And that kind of got rid of some of the darkness that we had in there. And then that fill looks okay at normal um, because I'm seeing everything. But look at the really nice appearance that we've gotten from the sword already with these settings. So actually rather, rather nice. And you know, by the ability to do this really gives us some pretty cool results. So again, I built my form and then I build my base color. Now I can add my details. So how do I do that? Let's say there's some sort of cool texture that we wanna to add to this sword. So if I go ahead and if I hold shift, it will kind of snap to my axis. Um, I can paint right in here. So let's see what kind of brushes I have to work with. I have brushes, I have alpha maps. I can right click or drag in my own texture. Um, that That's really cool. Uh, so that's something we can do. And um, what else do we have? We have like brushes that do specific like functions. We even have things like screws and bolts that if I create simple layers and I grab, like I said, like a bolt, I can go ahead and put a bolt in my scene. Really amazing stuff. But let's go ahead and see what we can add. Um, let's go ahead and add, I don't know, let's add something really cool that's kind of default so you guys can find it. Let's add, I don't know, this X to the, the layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down and I wanna add this X only to my normal and to my, um, only actually to my normal and height information. So what that means is, remember that if my brush color here is a specific color, for instance, in this case, you can see it's going to be white, it's gonna be puffed out. So if I just click once, now I almost have this puffy X or this plus sign. So I can kind of play with some settings and really kind of look and and play with, you know, all sorts of kind of sub settings. Um, I could use things like this line here and I could like kind of make it dig into the piece. So that's kind of nice. Um, at any point, you can change your different brush sizes. So if you want to change the flow and the brush size of them, um, what I like to do is I like to uh, kind of just experiment a little bit more and kind of figure out what the best uh, piece is for me. So let's play around with these layers a little bit more and let's see if we can't get a really cool kind of effect going on here in our style. So we'll get maybe this circle and let's see if we can't just reset some of these settings. So if we were gonna paint with color and we painted in here, you can see it's kind of blown out. So what can we use? What can we do? Let's go and look through all the brushes and all the different tools that we have. Actually, that Substance logo is pretty cool. All right. So let's go ahead and make sure this is a paint layer, which is good. And we, um, we still have this screw shape, and that's what's kind of causing this to look kind of weird. So um, what I've been doing is I've actually been accidentally adding these shapes to one another. So let me go and get a brush real quick and uh, kind of take away some of these. So I'm going to hit the substance material. There we go. So I just hit the little X, and now I can go back to those alphas and get that cool substance shape. I like this S, actually. All right, so now if i take color off and i turn shininess and roughness and keep just height and i move my height slider to the right when i paint with this i get a raised element now if i move this the other way negatively and i paint with this typically don't paint and drag i get a the illusion of another shaped element so by changing i can actually paint with height or paint inversely depending on the brush itself. So again, you can really get the illusion, as you can see here, the illusion of texture. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna hold that shift key and I'm going to just paint, I'm gonna move my brush maybe negatively here and let's see what we get. Pretty cool, right? So now we have that little emblem marked into the bottom of the sword, which is really neat. 
So that's my, so I can say emblem, emb, there we go. I can continue to add more elements, so let me add some more textures. And maybe we want to add some scrapes and scratches. So we have like things like claw, claw, uh, claw marks. We have different brushes that will give us the illusion of dirt. So you can actually go and add dirt or clumps of dirt. Uh, but we do have a scratch brush, which I really like. So again, I want to adjust my height brush and I'm just painting in the height. And I'm just gonna go through and make a few scratches where I see fit. Pretty nice, I like that. Now if I wanna paint these with color, I can just activate my color and I'm gonna just paint with red for a second and now it will paint red. In addition, I can also paint the specularity so we can start getting some cool results. And this is a really kind of fun thing to do. So you can continue to add layers. You have fill layers, you have smart materials, which we'll get into a sec in a second. And we actually have um, masks and effects and all sorts of cool things. But you can paint in just, if I wanted to just paint my specularity, for instance, and just the shininess, I could go ahead and come in here and you can see now there's a different level of shininess to this area than there is the other area. So I can kind of adjust those levels and when I paint, again, they're all kind of different levels of lighting, which is really, really neat to do. Um, but it's a lot quicker, isn't it? So again, um, I can isolate what elements I paint Maybe we'll go back to those alphas. Maybe we'll get, maybe we'll get these. I'll use my bracket keys to make this small, and we can add a little detail to our map here. Something that would be rather kind of hard to do if we weren't using substance, but uh, in substance it actually makes it look rather easy. Uh, we could go in and add on top of materials. So again, if I want to take this material here and I want to play kind of with this brush rotation and just rotate it and make sure that it's set to maybe 90 degrees. There we go. Can scale up and I can do this. And what will that do? That will give me the illusion of strapping. So that's kind of neat. It kind of wraps it around my element, but I kind of dig it. So again, we have this rare ability to kind of play around with our settings and really just get really cool results rather quickly actually um, with our, our kind of methods here. So again, uh, play around a little bit, see what you can come up with. Really don't be afraid to isolate specific areas to get the areas that you need. It just really depends on the brush and the source that you're using. So again, um, the great thing is you can just undo, right? If any of these, you know, if you don't want to put a giant plus sign here, then don't do that. Just, you know, shrink it down and maybe put a plus sign on the back of the sword. And let's see what the back of the sword looks like. Now we have a plus sign. So kind of cool, right? Uh, so we can continue to add to these, but one of the cooler kind of generative effects would be the smart materials. Now smart materials are basically materials that have a lot of these settings already built into them. So for instance, if I wanted a uh, worn leather or a fine leather, so here's a rough leather for instance, I can go ahead and drop this in. It's gonna cover everything now, but don't worry. Let me delete some of these. And I can add a mask like we did before. And I can use my square up here to actually isolate these areas. Now, why is this material different? Well, this material actually has a folder with a ton of sub properties. So there's, a, for instance, a layer that is dust. And that layer has a mask on it that allows us to kind of control the dust value. And so we can kind of go in here and adjust specific parameters depending on, you know, that filter. And sometimes they show up, sometimes they don't. Again, it is trial and error. Um, we have dirt. The dirt has the mask filter, so we can kind of 
go in and let's see if we can't up the value of the dirt. And let's do, and again, some of them are, are kind of tricky. You just got to keep going through and find them. You can even hit random seeds. We have edgeware, so we can add specific amounts of grunge. And up there you go. Now you can start seeing the grunge. Occasionally it takes a little bit of time to kind of find uh, your, your groove here. But it's a really cool filter. So if you don't want that, like let's go ahead and hit delete. We can explore other options. So let's say maybe the blade. What if we want to, let's create a new folder. Um, actually, we don't even need to create a folder. We can just, well, we'll create it. We'll call this blade. And in the blade folder, let's find that, let's kind of rebuild this material using the materials and we'll use an, a rough iron. Great. And let's go up to the top of the blade. Let's add a mask, black mask. And let's then select just the blade materials. That looks good. And now what we can actually do is we can kind of start combining materials. So let's say I want to put some rust on this. So I put some rust on this, but I don't want the rust to cover the entire sword. So that looks kind of weird. So I could use a generator on the mask of the rust. So if I add a rust mask and I say add generator, I actually have generators that are at generators like dirt or dripping rust. So if I hit dripping rust, now, the rust kind of builds in. And the coolest part about this is I can go through and I can mess with the amount of spread on the rust, the contrast, the intensity of how that actually drips. And now we get more realistic results. And even it works in, even in the specular. So that's one of the options. Let me show you another one. Another one, a uh, very famous one, is metal edgeware. People use this a lot and that gives you kind of a cool edge uh, for that rust. And again, we can adjust the wear level, the contrast to make it more or less. And what I kind of do is just kind of go through each one and really see what, what works and what doesn't. And I'm kind of digging the first one we had used um, a little bit more. So you can see this one. So let's go back, click on generators, and we'll use uh, the the dripping rust that gave us a more realistic kind of result. So you can see it's rather easy to get really creative in substance. Um, we can go down to this leather and we could actually apply these to anything. So if we were to delete this layer and let's see, let's delete, that's our little scratches. We can delete that. The emblems I'm kind of digging, um, but we can kind of go back into base and I can go to a layer above this. So let's do coarse rust. Actually, what I want is like a dirt kind of feel to it. So let's add, let's go to this leather bag and let's add a generator and let's generate dirt and we will invert this and now we have kind of a dirty you can see it's layering dirt on top of that shader so kind of neat so what i could even do is i could go and add maybe a nice uh, different leather underneath it and we'll go ahead and make sure that's in the same realm and let's add a black mask let's isolate that just to this and now we can see it's coming through. Isn't that really amazing? Uh, Substance Painter does a lot of really amazing things um, and it allows the artist really just to expand their creativity and just have an absolute blast with creating these kind of really cool effects. So overall, um, go ahead and play around with Substance Painter, um, play around with all the different kind of settings and, and the uh, and the creativity that you can kind of output. But when you're done, 
You can even take this back to Photoshop. So if I right click and I say export textures or control shift E, I can go ahead and I usually take my padding off and I can export all of these textures. So I can export them Unity 5. If you are using um, your Sketchfab, you can actually take them straight to Sketchfab and put them on your account. But if I hit export here, give them a few seconds, open folder, what it's now done is given me these different materials. And we have the smoothness, we have, again, kind of some normal maps. You can see that leathery look, and we have even the emblem down here, and all of them are really ready to go. We have that color map that you can kind of see that all the different levels and the shading. This would have taken me a lot longer in Photoshop. Substance has simply sped up this process. So again, really go and have fun with Substance. Really build it out the way I did. You have this video that should give you a good idea of the form um, and then the base, and then just really have fun with the brushes and effects and really see what you can add. Remember, you can also add your own emblems and logos by simply dragging in imagery into Substance. It's really easy to use, really user-friendly, and uh, hopefully I, uh, you guys will use Substance on your projects. Look forward to seeing the results.